Welcome to our masterclass session where we are discussing how you can convert today's online browsers into buyers. I'm Julia Malo, Content Strategy and Insight Manager here at Hitwise. We're going to discuss how to measure, attract, and capture key customer segments that you may be focusing on today. Most businesses are focusing on their current customers online, the people who typically visit and purchase or book or convert on their site. CRM and site-centric analytics have made it easier to retain, re-engage, and grow this base of customers. While retention and loyalty are critical in today's competitive online landscape, this session will showcase segments that may not be on your radar, but that are going to become much more important over time. The three segments we'll focus on are indirect customers, so those who buy products from your brand, but from other marketplaces or vendors. Second, those lost customers. People who are visiting your site or searching for your brand, but who end up purchasing or booking elsewhere. And lastly, potential customers, those who are aware of your brand, but haven't actually taken the steps to visit or search for you. So businesses tend to put less of a focus on these segments because they're harder to find and target online. In this session, we're going to cover how audience-based analytics can help address the gaps among your potential lost and indirect customers. But before we dive in, I'd like to share a bit about Hitwise so you can get some context around the examples we'll walk through. Hitwise has been around for 20 years and focuses on understanding the digital environment. This includes benchmarking performance against competition, pinpointing online behaviors and the audiences that are driving those actions, as well as tracking and improving online campaign performance. And all of this starts with tracking your consumer's entire digital journey. While online data can be disconnected, Hitwise sees all online events like search, browse, visit, and purchase behaviors, allowing you to build and target these audiences through paid search, content, programmatic, and other digital marketing channels. Through analytics and URL thread data, you can understand key co consumer targets and their digital behaviors. So here's a simple example of what that really means. If a consumer wants to purchase some ground coffee, they can go on Amazon and search for their favorite brand, say Caribou Coffee. From there, we can see what products they considered and how they arrived there. And when we unpack the full URL, we can answer questions like, what search term did the consumer use to find my product? What did they click on specifically? Which product was it? And was the you know, post that they clicked on sponsored or not? So in this example, the consumer searched for caribou coffee, but actually ended up looking at Pete's Coffee's Pete Nick pack. With this information, we can begin to understand the consumer's digital behaviors and determine if they are a buyer or a browser. This is a key step in creating effective programs to reach your most profitable customers. So now let's dive into the three browser segments we mentioned earlier. First, your indirect customers. Not all brands sell direct and many rely on retail partnerships. With just 10 sites accounting for 40% of all online traffic, brands really need to sell indirectly to better compete. However, brands would still need to know if their products are converting on those retailers or if this approach is cannibalizing their own direct sales. We're going to explore the distinction between direct and indirect buyers with an example from Adidas. It starts with finding the right mix of direct and indirect buyers. The data shows us that there's a sizable share of buyers visiting Adidas' site, but then buying on a different channel. 59% of Foot Locker Adidas buyers visited the Adidas site and 36% of Nordstrom Adidas buyers did the same. So how can Adidas minimize this cannibalization of sales? Tracking the sales trends for direct versus indirect buyers allows us to see when peaks occur for each group's buying cycle. Based on the results, Adidas can time their promotions with Nordstrom closer to Christmas and for Foot Locker before Black Friday. Aside from different sales cycles, we can determine if there are any demographic differences in these audiences. Although there's a 50% overlap in Foot Locker Adidas buyers that also visit the Adidas site, demographic data shows the vast differences between these groups. In summary, understanding the unique behaviors and attributes of your direct and indirect buyers can help a brand create strategies that will engage each group according to their interests. The second segment we'll focus on is lost customers. How can you win customers who ended up purchasing from a competitor? In this example, we're going to highlight how to gain these customers back through search and clickstream insights featuring a services brand. 
So Lightstream is a consumer loan division of SunTrust Bank, and like many financial services brands, Lightstream focuses on conversions through its online application. When benchmarked against its competitor set, Lightstream shows a higher application start rate. Its application completion rates fall short. Its registering rate is 35% compared to 44% from its competitive set. So what can Lightstream do to win back these applicants? They need to learn to how to get more customers to their site by preempting applicants to visit. They look into top traffic sources that are used by its completed applicants. Lightstream can prioritize those sites for advertising and promotions. This in turn can help drive more buyers to their site than to competition. Another way to bring in more buyers is to align marketing with the solutions applicants are most interested in. With search data, we can see that applicants are interested in low interest, low monthly payment loans. With this information, Lightstream and other brands can target those interests to minimize the leakage to competitors. And for our last segment, we're gonna focus on potential customers. When it comes to investing in any advertising or sponsorship, brands need to be able to qualify and prove the value of their campaign. If this final, in this final example, we're gonna walk through how audience analytics can help measure and improve campaign performance through the lens of one of the priciest events of the year, the Super Bowl. This chart is analyzing some sponsors from the 2019 Super Bowl and how fans search for them over the course of the week. When we define the campaign audience, we can see how each brand performs within this target group. Among auto sponsors, Mercedes-Benz saw the smallest lift, but Bud Light was a big winner in drinks, with more than 15x lift. Avocados from Mexico also performed well and received a 20x lift with Super Bowl fans. Sponsors can also profile their potential customers to see if they are attracting and growing a new set of customers. Here we see that while Super Bowl fans were more likely to be male, 18 to 24 years old, and from New England states, each sponsor attracted a different audience profile within this category. As an example, avocados from Mexico skewed more towards 35 plus year old women. But most importantly, Super Bowl sponsors want to measure the lift in sales and conversions as a result of their campaign. By tracking purchases online before, during, and after the campaign, brands can assess the success of their sponsorship. For M&Ms and Pepsi, the campaign led to meaningful lifts in sales on Amazon after their campaigns. Um, but for brands like Doritos and Pringles, they might want to leverage these findings to inform their future partnerships to improve. Let's quickly recap what we've just covered. When you get an understanding of how the path to purchase differs for direct and indirect buyers, you can leverage those insights to grow sales across all channels. To minimize the number of lost customers, learn what they're looking for specifically with search data to tailor promotions that draw them away from competitive sites. And lastly, reach more potential customers by building campaign audiences to measure brand lift so you can develop strategic advertising partnerships. Thank you for listening. If you have any other questions, please contact the HitWise team at the email address listed on the screen or visit our website, www.hitwise.com. See you next time.